Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today we have my sister's 2017 Ford Fiesta SE hatchback. Um, it's got 35,417 miles on the clock. And today we are going to fix an overheating issue. This has been something that this car has been doing for quite a while now. It's been maybe almost a year where this car would have intermittent overheating issues. Um, it's been losing coolant somehow. And the first time it was discovered was, I think she called me uh, last, it was sometime during last winter when she called me and said that she thought she smelled something funny with the car. Um, you know, I went over to look at it when I could, noticed, you know, the coolant tank was low it wasn't empty but it was low uh, and it had uh, the smell was s something of coolant you know that sweet coolant smell that you know coolant has so um, we we topped off some coolant and uh, I didn't see anything leaking um, I just uh, normally would have thought that you know these uh, most of the Ford cars that I see Actually, a lot of cars that I see that come in, you know, to the shop, and most cars now have this, um, what Ford calls a degas bottle, or a surge tank. The, the actual coolant reservoir is actually under pressure. Um, so, basically the cars that don't have radiator caps, you know, directly on the radiator. Well, I've noticed, you know, a lot of times they will kind of lose coolant over time, just, you know, slowly, very, very slowly. Um... You know, my Fusion, I've had to add coolant to it twice in the, the last, you know, few years that I've had it. Um, and then the Fiesta, my wife's Fiesta, same thing. It's just that the, the coolant just evaporates or something. It goes, you know, somewhere. But there's no leaks. Nothing seems to be out of place. There's no smells. It just naturally happens. So I'm always topping coolant tanks off at work, um, you know, on these types of cars. I thought maybe that was the issue with this one, but that doesn't really, you know, uh, explain the smell, why I'm smelling coolant, but I'm not seeing any coolant, you know. So, uh, you know, a few weeks go by after that, she says, you know, calls me up, says the same thing again, and uh, she still smells it. I come over to look at it, and sure enough, it's, it's a little low again. Not as low as it was. It hadn't gotten to that point yet, but it was low again, so... There is a leak somewhere, and we don't know where. So, let's you know, let's kind of jump, you know, all all the way through the last few months. This car has gotten hot a few times. She's you know said, um, <laughs> I mean, it has gotten hot. Um, I don't think it's been dangerous enough to ruin anything. The car still runs good. It's not smoking or anything. It's not making any weird sounds. But we got to figure out where the leak is going, you know. Um, so finally, you know, she brought the car uh, to me. We did an oil change on it. And the day that I did the oil change, she said, you know, it had run hot. The gauge was pretty much all the way up to hot, you know, the red zone. Um, and I, you know, we added coolant to it. And it was low again. Still no sign of any leak, which is I, still really bizarre that there was no leak. Um, no idea. No idea what was going on. Didn't see anything funny with the oil. So, you know, nothing's leaking in, into the engine. Um, so finally I was like, you know, I don't have anything here to test, you know, for coolant leaks. I don't have a, a pressure tester yet. But I said, you know, let's go get some dye. We'll dump some dye in the coolant and see if you know, over time we can find out where it's coming from. So before I tell you guys where it was going or where the coolant was coming from, we're going to talk about coolant for a moment and how important coolant is because, you know, if this issue has not been resolved yet, um, and even with all of the, uh, you know, overheating that it has gotten to over the last few months, you know, damage, man, potential damage catastrophic damage can occur so um, yeah let me tell you exactly how coolant and uh, the cooling system works keep in mind that when you have a liquid any liquid 
has a boiling point of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. When you have that water on the stove and you're, you're making pasta or something and that water starts rumbling and that water starts getting turbulent and bubbly, that's boiling, that's 212 degrees. Your car's engine, most cars nowadays, will usually run somewhere around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it might depend on, you know, car to car. I know, like my Grand Am with the 3.4 liter V6, has a thermostat that opens at 195 degrees. So once that thermostat opens, it tries to regulate the engine temperature to around you know, no lower than 195. Um, but that car will get usually about 200 degrees when it's being driven. If it is stopped and sitting still and runs long enough, that temperature will go up because obviously there's no cooling no wind, nothing going through the front grill to the radiator to keep everything cooler, unless of course the fans kick on. But just keep that in mind. Most cars will run anywhere like 200, 210 ish. If you're actually pulling a trailer or something, most cars will get over that if you're going up hills and if you're really working that engine. Um, yeah. So you can imagine if we didn't have the cooling system that cars have today, it would get real quick, it'd be real quick to get to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And when you have coolant that's boiling, it's basically useless. It's not going to do its job. It's not going to keep everything cool. If you have boiling coolant, everything else is going to get hot. Everything else, the engine and everything, is going to get hot faster. It's going to stay hot. And then that's when you're going to start having problems with seals, gaskets, the actual engine block or heads might warp or crack. Um, that is when you're going to have catastrophic failure if the cooling system has boiling coolant in it. So 212 degrees. Now a cooling system is designed to build up pressure. Uh, the pressure is very important um, because when you have pressure in the system, it is going to keep the boiling point or it's going to raise the boiling point. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out a way to explain this. But the boiling point is going to raise when you have more pressure in the system. So, for example, if you have 212 degrees and you add 1 pound per square inch, 1 PSI, to that in the system, that boiling point will raise 3 degrees for every pound that you add to the system. So, if it's 212 and you add a pound to that, you're adding 3 degrees. So the boiling point now goes from 212 to 215. If you had a 2 pounds to it, it goes from 215 to 218 degrees. If you added 3 pounds to it, it goes from 218 to 221, and so forth. So the more pressure in the system, the higher the boiling point. However, a system can only hold so much. On this Fiesta, if I'm not mistaken, I think the cap on the thing, on the on the degas bottle, says that the system is rated for 21 PSI. And we take 21, we times that by 3, so 21 pounds per square inch in the system, times every 3 degrees that that boiling point will raise, that's an additional 63 degrees. So if we take our 212 and we add 63 to that, so the boiling point in the cooling system on this car is designed for 275 degrees. There is no way that a car, even if it gets a little warm, should be reaching that 275 degree mark. If that coolant in this engine reaches 275 degrees, that is when you're going to start to have big problems. Big problems. So that's just a little information for you. Just something to keep in the back of your mind because the whole thing that I'm noticing with this car in general is when it gets hot or when, you know, uh, she says it gets hot and we look at this bottle, the, the coolant tank in this car, it's always low. Obviously, there's pressure leaving the system somewhere 
and it's not if it's not holding pressure then that that thermostat that boiling point is going to be lower and the coolant's going to get hotter and that's when you're going to have problems but i noticed the coolant tank is never completely empty there's like you know it's always below the minimum mark way below the minimum mark but it's never empty when i come to look at it so it's been leading me to believe that it's the actual degauss bottle that's the problem so when we added the dye to it and she drove it for a while um, probably about a thousand miles or so and I went and looked at it and sure enough I found the dye it's all underneath the degauss bottle so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna change the degauss bottle and uh, that should correct everything now before we actually get started with our repair I wanted to hook the Altel up and see if uh, there's actually any codes or anything related to this thing getting hot um, the check engine light I don't think ever came on uh, the only thing that my you know sister would say and I've even witnessed it at one point is that coolant gauge was literally lit up all the way to the H and you can see on this there's only two dashes before that H that little line there that would be where the uh, danger zone is so I want to see if there's actually any record or anything here of this you know system getting extremely hot and um, just out of curiosity as long as it didn't get to 275 everything should be okay and like I said the car itself really is running good there's really no um, doesn't seem to be any severe damage yet I see here as it's scanning through all the modules uh, the PCM did have a fault in it like I said no light I don't know if it would make the light go on unless it's maybe like a pending fault or something so far everything else seems to look okay Yeah, so one fault in the PCM. Let's see what that is going to say. Let's do read codes. Uh, key on engine off. Okay. Engine coolant over temperature condition. P0217. So let's look at freeze frame data and see where it set that at. Loop. It might be in uh, Fahrenheit. Oh, it is 239 degrees. Whew. All right. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So that it didn't set a check engine light apparently because the light hasn't been on. Um, but just knowing that you know it was at 239, obviously the car knows that it's hotter than it should be um, so yeah almost 240 degrees still a little ways from boiling point still not 100 percent you know safe 156 trips since the first snapshot freeze frame so this was probably one of the early on conditions that it picked this up so the good thing is once once we fix this we can actually clear this out but, yeah, so I had a feeling it was gonna. There was something gonna be logged in there for that, with with how hot it's been getting. So, that's enough of that. Let me unhook this, and let's finally get under the hood and uh, take care of this. All right, so here we are. Here's our coolant tank here. Yeah, 21 psi is what I thought it said. You can see it's low. That's usually about how low it gets. Um, you know, it's definitely you know it's under the min mark. It wasn't coming any lower than that. It wasn't going any lower than that. Um, but if we look back here, and I know it's hard to see, try to zoom in on it, kind of see that line there, and that stuff there. Yep, all that red stuff, that's dye. That's the dye that I put in there. So, 
there's no other line for this coolant tank at all. There's one here, there's one here, and that's it. There is no other thing under here for that cooling tank. Um, the AC lines are there. There's one here, the other AC line is there. So that wouldn't do it. That has nothing to do with, you know, the cooling system. So it's the tank. And that was my suspicion all along. So we got a new tank here. Uh, this is uh, the part number, the actual Ford part here. Uh, it was about 40 bucks, not bad. So if you're doing this out of warranty like she is, it's not expensive. And then we bought one gallon of pre-diluted yellow coolant to throw in it. They don't make the orange coolant anymore for Ford. The yellow is perfectly safe for this application. So um, it's completely fine. And like I said, we got pre-diluted because it's already mixed. That was like 12 bucks. So all in all, it's, uh, you know, under 60 bucks, I think. So there shouldn't be much to get this tank out. First thing we need to do, because it's still a little warm, but it's not warm, warm. We gotta let the pressure out of the system, what's left in it. A little bit there. I didn't want to do this while it was like overly hot, you know. You definitely don't want to do this when it's overly hot. And then, it's going to get messy and unfortunately I can't get this underneath. So, I have cardboard here and hopefully the cardboard will soak it, soak it up. Because, not that I really care, but if you have dye in the system, it'll stain the driveway. So, this... Um, this AC line has to get moved out of the way, and there's a bolt here, or a nut, I should say. I'm not sure what size it is. It might be either a 10, maybe an 8. What's this in my pocket? 10? Yeah, it is a 10, so we gotta get our ratchet. I brought the 8 out just in case. Let's see if we can get this in there. There we go. Just gotta get the right angle to get the ratchet on there. All right, so now that you get the, the nut off, we just lift this up over top. It just kind of loosens it. You know, there's more, you know, flexibility in getting that to move. It's not going to move completely because of the, you know. But there's some play if you got to wiggle around it. So that's what they call for in the service manual. Now here's the part that's going to get messy. <laughs> so I'm going to disconnect this line here. We're just going to squeeze this tab, so these two tabs here. And uh, it might take a little bit of effort because of how long it's been in there. Yeah, there it goes. There we go. All right. And remember, this goes over top of this line just like this. So if you're going to move it, move it. You know, just keep be mindful of where it's going to go. So we'll just leave that there. This is the one that's gonna cause the mess. So what I'm gonna to try to do is we need to get our pair of eel nose here to get this clamp off. But I was also hoping I can use my vice grips to pinch this line off so all of the coolant doesn't come spewing out, you know. So everything that's in here is for sure in the tank gonna obviously make the mess, but I want to try to keep everything in the line itself only because there's less uh, chances of air entering the system and then you gotta wait for it to bleed out. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so we've loosened the clamp, got it wiggled down some. It's past the neck of the bottle. So now all we need to do is get this bottle off and like I said, all that coolant's just gonna come rushing out and making a mess, so be prepared. Hopefully this is tight enough. I don't want to destroy the hose, so it's probably not 100% tight up on there, you know? But, you know, either way. Almost there. There it goes. And again, it's just gonna make a mess. <laughs> right, so we'll try to move this over here. 
That'll work. Stand that up. All right, and there's uh, there's that. So we're definitely gonna have to like throw some, you know, water. We want to wash all that away, obviously, when we're done. There's still some in there. <laughs> so that's how you do that. Now, getting the bottle out, we just have to kind of walk it off of these, uh, you know, tabs here. Um, we should just be able to like push in the green part there a little bit, kind of see how it's locked behind it or in front of it, and then just kind of wiggle it up out of there. All right, so this should be it. We got the side behind the AC line up. The side is on its way up. Yeah, there it goes. All right. so now it's back on the other side. There we go. This is why that AC line's got to be moved. And there we have it. Oh, look. There's the collection of dye right there at the bottom. So that leak was coming from somewhere right around there. Oil and coolant looks awesome together, but you don't want to see that in the engine, just so you know. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that looks like that was the failure point there. I wonder, you know, it was probably just the tiniest little crack. Cars can go their entire lives without having these needing these replaced and unfortunately some of them will need to be replaced so it just it just depends I guess you know all right time to change gloves all right, so here's the aftermath there's where all the dye was running down here's all of our new coolant that you know obviously spilled out everywhere So yeah, definitely the bottle. Like I said, there's no other line there that would leak that. So, yep. Okay, let's open the new one up. Here's the new one. So apparently, when you get the new one, for one, you need to keep the cap to the old one because the new one doesn't come with the cap, which, honestly, I wasn't expecting. But from the old one, we need to take out that bottom plug for that spot where that one line if there's an additional line that's got to go there so we have to cap that off and we have everything else we've got the two lines so that's it that's the new one fairly simple process we got the old plug into the new bottle it was uh, you know came out just as easy just like that upper line you just squeeze those two tabs pull it out and you just push it back in like we did here so that's done. Now I'm going to take it and we're just going to seat it onto the mounting points there. And then we can hook all the lines back up and start filling it up. All right, and that's it. It's all done. We just have to fill it up. Before I fill it up, I put the cap back on it. We're going to go in the house, get a you know bucket of water, dump all of this stuff off of here because once I fill it up, I'm going to let it run and I obviously want to see if there's any new leaks um you know just to make sure <laughs> um when you're putting this line on down here the line has a notch that lines up with that so uh, you've probably seen it coming off and then of course with the squeeze clamp just try your best to get it back up to where it is this is on there pretty good so that is attached we've got our plug in here at the bottom our upper line is also pushed back into place, routed the way that it needs to be. It actually tucks into that thing right there. So now it's where it needs to be. The other one's still in. That's it. Uh, we'll have to put our AC line back. Let's lift this up here. It's crooked. There we go. So we'll just have to put the nut back on tighten it down and uh, 
That's it. So let's go get some water. All right, so I went and got some hot water to dump on it, hoping that the hot water might you know, break up the dye. And it looks like it did. Looks like it got rid of uh, most of it. Tried to get most of the coolant off there. Still a little bit behind the bottle. But that should be okay. So when we start it, it's probably gonna squeal a little bit because of the belt and stuff being wet. But that's fine, it'll dry. Um, so let's finally fill that uh, tank up and get it started. Fills it up a little over max, but I have a feeling once it starts actually getting whatever air is in it out, that's going to lower. And even then, that's really not that bad. Not overly filled. All right, caps on. Make sure it, it goes to that little notch, you know, so it's actually locked. It'll have like a stop, and then it'll stop again. You know what I mean? So it's on there. Let's get this. Uh, let's get this nut on this AC stud here. All right. So before I started, I want to hook this up. I want to look at live data just to keep an eye on what the actual engine temperature is going to be. Um, it's crooked because of the way the wheel is, so I can get to stay on there. So we'll get through this and then uh, tap into the live data and we'll go ahead and start it up and keep an eye on it for a little bit. Like I said, it's probably going to squeal. It's going to make some noise, most likely, because of all the coolant and the water that we just dumped all over the, the belt and the pulleys. So let's do control, let's do PCM, let's do live data. It's always got to go through some steps. <laughs> And we'll just find it. We'll make it the only thing on the screen so we don't have to look at all this stuff. Engine coolant temp status, no fault. Is that the only thing it's going to tell me? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that also. I think those are really the ones that we need. Just show those three there. It's at 82 degrees right now because it's been sitting. We emptied the system out, or opened the system, I should say. All right, and we'll let it run. You can see the old stuff already pumping into the thing. <laughs> so that's good, so it's already going in. I'm obviously, I'm not seeing anything automatically like dripping out out of the hoses that we took off. Nothing up there. So I'll let it run, that'll probably lower, like I said, once it's actually in through the system. And uh, 
check back with you guys in a bit. All right, so I went in to get another bucket of water, dumped it all over the ground. And right now it's at 122, oh, almost 124. Give it a little bit of revs here. Of course, low on gas. It's not low enough, it's fine. The gauge is just about where it should be. Reading at 125, 27. So either way, sitting here, we should not have any, you know, overheating issues. Um, offhand, like I said, I do not know what the actual engine operating temperature criteria of this particular engine is. It being so small, it might run a little cooler than most cars. Like I said, you know, usually it's around the 200-ish. Um, so... Obviously before it gets too hot, you know, we should have some fans and even with even without the fans that that thing there should not even be moving up. You know, it might it might move one more peg. But even then that's fine. So, we're getting it to uh what 140. All right, so I actually logged into service data on my phone from Ford. Uh, the thermostat on this car opens at 180, so I'm at one, almost 171 right now, and fully open, this car runs at about 207 degrees Fahrenheit. So still got a little ways away, um, you know, 207, if it picked up that it was almost at 240 when it was set in that code, you know, that's a troublesome spot. So the thermostat is almost at the opening mark, that coolant tank is probably going to level out a little bit better once that's open I'm assuming and then basically this car should not get any hotter than 207 <laughs> and if it does then it should uh, it should correct itself now that it has the correct pressure in the tank okay got it running at about two grand again thermostats about at opening point so close Oh, all right, 181, so the thermostat should be opening. Starting to let the coolant flow throughout the rest of the system. That little peg there did not move up any. It's still two spots away from that little danger zone. 183. Yeah, I might have bumped up a hair. But the good news is I don't see anything new. I don't smell anything. Tried to wash all the coolant away. So I don't smell anything. Tank's warm. This little line here is hot. That line there is hot. That little plug there is not leaking. Alright, let's close it up and take it for a drive. After we get our tools out. All right, so we're on the road now. I'm gonna go get some lunch with this thing. See if um, it's gonna act up or act normal. So far, 190 is where it's at. Us also moving the car, uh, you know, if there's any air in those lines, you know, it's gonna probably burp itself through the, the tank now. Now that's moving. So 190.4 is where we're at and uh, we'll keep an eye on it as we drive. All right, so it, it dropped down to 180, 188 uh, as the car is still moving. So that's good, the uh, thermostat still seems to be operating. It's not letting it fall under the 180 degree mark. So that's good. So far everything seems to be working out just fine. We'll see how it acts once I get into a drive-through. Hopefully there's a line and I can sit there to try to, you know, duplicate the uh, situation that she was in when it's, you know, would start to overheat. But uh, so far it's looking really good. Okay, bumped up to 194. 
Still on the road, almost at our destination. Gauge is still in the perfect spot. Up oh, 192.2. Drats, unfortunately, there is no line. I might just have to sit here and act like there's a line. <laughs> I'm kidding. 192 is where we're at right now. Okay, getting ready to leave the drive through now. Went up to about 196. Still pretty good, but I wasn't sitting in the drive through long enough. But overall, I think I think the car is in good shape now. Um, it probably definitely would have been getting hot. See, it even went back down 194. And I didn't even really leave yet, so. I think it's going to be all right. We just turned on the heat because I wanted to make sure the heat was good. And obviously heat is really good. Uh, thermostat, or the temperature dropped to about 187 as of right now. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. It's, I think it's going to be all right. All right, so we just popped back up at the house. It went back up to about 192-ish right there. Um, we'll double check the level here, make sure there's nothing leaking, but I'm going to call it and say that we're good. I don't think there's anything else to worry about. Still at the max mark. Still a little over. That's no big deal. I don't see anything leaking. I don't smell anything. Everything seems to be connected good. I think we're done. Let's do one more check to make sure there's no codes pending anywhere. We're up to 194. That's okay. Uh, let's go back. Let's do read codes. Uh, engine's running now. Or we could do it this way, receive all CMDTCs. There shouldn't be anything in there. Nope. I think it is good to go. That thing there didn't move at all. That's where it should always be, right there in the center. So if we go back to engine, coolant temp 194. Yeah, it's good. Engine's been on for a little over a half hour total. So we're good, we're gonna wrap up this vlog now. So I hope everybody learned a little something here today about why, you know, engine coolant is very important to your car. Um, and also a little bit about how the cooling system works and how it keeps everything um, from getting, you know, hot, too hot, overheating, boiling. Um, it's actually a little phenomenal in a way to think that you know pressure on the system like that can actually modify uh, a liquid's boiling point you know it's it was cool to when I learned that in school I thought that that was actually really really awesome but there you have it and we also learned how to uh, change the degas bottle on a Ford Fiesta hopefully I don't have to deal with that on my own but if I do it really isn't all that bad of a procedure anybody can do that um, as long as you got the right tools and the right knowledge and this video hopefully this video helped if you are in that situation But that's it. So I'm gonna call it uh, quits get this back to her after I eat my lunch and That's all I've got for today guys So if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up comment subscribe check out teespring.com slash store slash Mike's Fugle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise it's all that I've got, so I will see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching, and take care.